Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. If you're all still going a bit stir crazy, I'm going to make some pasta. Non più dry farfalon amoroso, notte giorno di torno girano, delle belle torbando al riposo, ma ci sento a tuo cibo d'amor, delle belle torbando al riposo, Nacci set wa tu ci no d'amor. Non più vrai questi bei panachi. Alright, uh, so I'm still cooped up a little bit. I thought let's have a go at making some pasta. I haven't done it for ages. But I haven't got any double zero flour, so let's have a go with this strong flour. So if anyone's been able to find that, that's what I'm using. I think plain flour just doesn't have enough protein, not enough gluten. It won't be stretchy or strong enough. Uh, I'm going to use eggs. I've got an extra little bit of water if I need it, but otherwise, yeah, it's a very, very basic kind of recipe. I'm just going to crack on with it now and let's see how we get on. Okay then, so using a strong bread flour instead of double zero, this should be fine. The eggs, again, are going to help to make it nice and stretchy. So I weighed out exactly 200 grams there and adding basically what I think is a very large pinch of salt. So the very basic recipe would be 100 grams of flour to one egg. Tip your flour onto your work surface or put it into a food processor if you want to do it that way, that's fine. Make sure you've got a really good well with the, the side walls are a dam here and that is to stop this liquid egg from escaping, running all over your work surface, which believe me, I've done many a times and got this wrong and start over again. But you can see as you sort of progress here, scraping in from the sides, that thin liquid sort of becomes much more like a slurry and as it gains viscosity, that's a good word for me, it's much less likely to escape. You can obviously just do this if you like this part in a bowl first and then tip it onto your work surface if you want to knead by hand but you'll find that you sort of leave quite a lot of residue in the bowl and this way I just think okay well we're only making one bit of mess so that's why I'm doing it this way. My bench scraper is going to come in handy here I'm going to use it to help me sort of cut it in in a second. So I thought, I normally I do a little bit of a history of a, of a thing, but pasta's so well known, everyone knows Marco Polo went to China, the end. Maybe not. Um, he went there in 1271, and I checked on Wikipedia, and there are actually accounts of pasta-like substances and doughs dating back to the 1st century AD. Um flour mixed with the juice of lettuce but forming sheets which were then layered up with things you know sounding very much like lasagna to me so who knows i don't anyway you don't come here for history lessons so as you can see me there now a bit more confident cutting into it and you're cutting into something a little bit more than just the dough there i i, I nicked my finger and you'll see a bit later on uh adorning a plaster but at this stage i was thinking i don't think i cut myself it just hurt a little bit and then i realized no sort that out so what we're also doing here, the, the kneading process is stretching out, working the glutens. That's some sciencey stuff there, apparently. They can see the plaster now. Um, but also you're helping the liquid to hydrate the flour. And that, that's the whole process, basically. This is painstakingly boring. Sometimes you think it's you're not doing anything. You're never going to get anywhere. This was at least 10 minutes at this stage and I'm there and testing it and thinking, okay, so we, I think we're definitely past stage one. We've got a really nice, smoothish, elastic key. Look at it. Look at it bounce back dough. But that now needs to rest for, I'd say, around about half an hour or so. Just wrap it up, put it on there. And as Binging with Babiche would say, go and watch an episode of Frasier or something like that. you got all the time in the world at the moment, haven't we? So half an hour later... Let's go back, let's, let's start working it again. And it, it does feel different. It does sort of feel slightly more supple and elastic. Now let's have a little stretch. It's looking really good. Well, definitely, that's the glutens that are working there, apparently. I, I'm no scientist, what do I know? But it's getting well, 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 stretchy. It'll go on forever. Oh, no, no, it broke. So I'm thinking, all right, so I think we can get away with needing a bit more. But perhaps it is a little bit on the dry side. So this is why I had some water available. I thought, just, I'll wet my hands. Just smear that on and just work that away. Squelches quite delightfully while you do that. And so, yeah, just carry on. What else am I going to do? <laughs> How's everyone doing out there? Let me know what you're getting up to uh, to pass the time. Anyway, so speed this up. This is several more minutes passing in a matter of seconds there. 
And I'm thinking, all right, I think now I've definitely achieved a really super smooth looking dough. And if I sort of stretch it out, it's not even tearing on the surface. You'll see a bit more. I'll describe it to you. There, there you go. So I think, yep, that's it. I'm very, very happy with that. So now you think we're ready to go. No, we're not ready to go. You've got to rest that again now. Now, if you're resting room temperature, a couple of hours, please, or maybe a minimum of an hour. I know, it's really frustrating, but this is not fast food. This is slow food. This is two hours later. You can, of course, wrap it up, put it in the fridge, and leave it overnight. I decided I'm just going to use a third of it today. The next video you see, I'll be making a lasagna. But today, I decided I'm going to make something I saw on this delightful show, this channel I've got, I watch all the time, called Pasta Grannies. I can't recommend it enough. These little old dinks, these ladies... They're well into their 90s, some of them, and they're making the pasta that they've made every day for the last 70 plus years. They're quite phenomenal. And of course, with what's going on in Italy at the moment, I am desperately worried about these ladies. I do hope they're okay. But I'm going to make one I saw on there. It's called Maloradis, Maloredus, or however I'm saying it, from Sardinia. It's also known as the Sardinian gnocchi, and you'll realize that by the shape. I'm even using my gnocchi board that I used a little while ago. Another excuse to get that out. So you make these little pieces, and the reason I'm doing this is because it's easy, and they look rustic and nice, and even if you're not very good at it, they still look really nice. So I've sort of made these, I don't know, little peanut sort of sized pieces, I suppose. You measure these things in uh, nuts, apparently. Uh, and I just sort of drag it along the board. And uh, yeah, one by one, and they're doing okay. And I thought, well, what they do is they dry them. I haven't got a rack big enough, uh, so I thought I'll put them on a tea towel, Sprinkle that with a bit of semolina flour, but you don't have to do that. The semolina flour is just something I had to have in my cupboard and a little bit on top. And I think, okay, let's quickly throw together a sort of made up sauce. This is not classical, that's the reason why I'm not really spending too much time this part of the video. So I've got some fresh tomatoes that are not very good yet in season, but you know, they're, they're tasting okay. Some sliced garlic, some sliced chili, some chopped parsley chorizo left over from the last video I did. What was that? Oh, the jambalaya. Yeah, go and check that video out. Very nice. So I thought, yeah, we'll have a bit of chorizo in there. Yep, anchovies. And this is all stuff that was basically in my fridge or in the cupboard. Hopefully most people will be able to find similar ingredients in their, in their kitchen. So salted boiling water. Put your pasta in there, your maloredus. I said it three times now, wrong each time. Several tablespoons full of extra virgin olive oil, of course, that's how you do things, masses of that stuff. And I thought, well, let's give the the chorizo a chance to sort of just gently sweat or simmer away there for a minute in the oil, in with the rest, leaving the pasta until later. And the cooking time on this pasta, it wasn't fully dried, probably took still a good five minutes Put a rolling ball in some salted water, obviously. Give that a bit of a toss around. That wine is gone by now. And I thought, well, that'd be nice because there's a few rich ingredients going in this. Let's put something piquant, is that the word? In some capers. I've been checking the pasta. I've been sort of just taking a piece out, nipping off the end, tasting it. It's about 80 to 90% cooked. I thought, we'll get it in the pan now with some extra water in there. Toss it around. Got some pecorino, haven't got any parmesan in my fridge, but pecorino will do, very nice. Add some parsley to it, and this is basically ready to serve now. I thought, well, oh, yeah. that's how you know I get my extra shots with my mobile phone, and there is the footage. It's nice, isn't it? And this is why I like Italian food so much. I like their presentation. I can do it. You just chuck it in a bowl <laughs> and grate some more cheese on top. And I thought, yeah, of course, put some parsley on it. That's That's me. And don't forget a whacking load of black pepper over it. And anyway, that's back over to me. All right, cheers. You can get that stuff really cheap. For some reason, no one wants to buy it. <laughs> Idiots. Do they honestly think that's got any relation to why, you know, people around the world are, you know, oh, anyway, some people. My benefit, that was going well cheap, and there's loads of it. Um, Maloredus, I think, is the name of this pasta. 
aka the Sardinian gnocchi, obviously because it's got that, that same shape, but this is not a potato gnocchi, this is a pasta dough. So I haven't done proper pasta for ages. And this sauce is, it's not anything traditional, it's just um, rush, have a look in the fridge, see what you've got. And um, yeah, it's really tasty. Yeah, I might use that one again. I think my lady would like this. Mm. Anyway, so, have a crack at making pasta. It's a bit of, um, you need a bit of elbow grease, but for someone like me, that exercise is, um, doesn't go amiss anyway. So, see you in the next video, coming real soon. Bye. Ci set wa tu ci mo d'amor Delle belle turbando e riposo Ma ci set wa tu ci mo d'amor Non più vrai questi bei panachini